This is Pastor Sean Odom from Cross Point Church in Weatherford, Oklahoma, with your God is Awesome, the Bible is Cool vlog. Today's focal passage comes from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 35. We're going to read verses 4 through 10, and um, then uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit, shall we? So let's do this. Isaiah chapter 35, uh, 4 through 10. Happy Leap Day, by the way. It's February 29th. So here's what it says. <clears throat> We'll go back to verse 3. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame Leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground bubbling springs to in humans or sorry, in the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor any ravenous beast. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there. And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Whew! It's a good word. You know, we all have fears. And I don't care if you are the manliest of men. There's something you're scared of. It might not be the usual things like snakes or spiders or heights. But I guarantee there's something. I mean, let me throw this one out to you. You ever fear of losing a loved one? like your kids? Does the thought of being alone after a spouse passes away, does that make you squirm? What about the prospect of losing your job or your house or your financial well-being? How are you going to support the kids then? See, fear can grab a hold of us no matter who we are. But there's a promise that the Bible makes to us. We don't have to be afraid of these things. God is in control, just as he was when the people of Israel were under trial. See, I've often heard that there are 365 times in the Bible where it mentions don't fear, that we don't need to fear. It's one for each day of the year. It's leap day, so we're going to add one more to it. Because see, here's the deal. It may not make sense to us the things that he's allowing to happen to us. We may not understand why he allows wars or famine and disease to wipe out millions of innocent people. We don't know why he takes people away from us when he does. And the biggest thing we don't understand is why he allows bad things to happen to good people. But we have to trust that he is in control, that he's sovereign. Our part in this is we have to believe, we have to have faith in the Lord that he will deliver us from evil. And even more so, perhaps, we have to trust that when calamity falls, and it will, and when we simply cannot grasp the reasoning, and there will be times where we can't, that God in his omniscience knows what he is doing. And that's just simply the point. God does know what he is doing. He has all the answers. We simply have to have the faith. We have joy and strength in the idea that God is all-powerful and therefore in control. And if we realize that, we do not have to bow to our fears. Because guess what? The Lord has it covered. God bless everybody. Hope to see you on Sunday. Take care.